My name is Nina and I am a recruitment coordinator with the IRA Fulton Schools of Engineering. So my job is very much to help facilitate these outreach and recruitment efforts. So I'll be serving as your moderator this morning. I'll be the one sending messages to you via the chat and helping moderate our Q&A. But our main speaker this morning is Megan. So Megan, I'll go ahead and let you introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Megan McLaughlin. I am one of the academic advisors in our advising office for the aviation programs. Um, I primarily work with the professional flight students, but also the other three majors as well. Um, so you will see us around campus hopefully soon in the fall um, and through email. Great, thanks. And then we also have two faculty joining us this morning. So Mark, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, welcome. Uh, my name is Mark O'Brien. I'm the uh, program chair for aviation. Uh, and again, I'd like to welcome you to this virtual visit. Wonderful. And then we also have uh, Mr. Greg Files on the call with us. Hey, everybody. Greg Files here. Uh, I'm one of the uh, lecturers in the aviation department. I'm also the faculty lead for the pro flight side. So uh, if you're in the pro flight program, you'll be uh, uh, working with me throughout your whole uh, your whole time here at ASU, so welcome. Great, thanks, Greg. And then we also have two students joining us. So Trevor, do you wanna introduce yourself? Yeah, hi guys, my name is Trevor. I'm a senior in the professional flight program. I actually graduate this spring. Um, and then, yeah, I'm also part of Alpheta Row and I think we'll have slides later with that. Awesome, and last but not least, we have Brittany. Hi, I'm Brittany, I'm a junior, well, I guess senior. I'm graduating next semester and I'm also in the pro flight program. Great, so before we kind of kick off the presentation, I just wanna encourage you to ask questions. We have advising, we have students, we have faculty on the call. So really any questions you have about our aviation programs, don't be shy, just put them in the Q&A as we go through. So Megan, it's all yours. Okay, perfect, let me get set up here. See if I do this correctly, guys. Okay. All right, so um, we're gonna talk about obviously the aviation programs this morning. So we do have um, four concentrations. So it's, you'll have a bachelor's in aeronautical management technology with either a concentration in air traffic management, air transportation management, professional flight and or unmanned aerial systems. With these majors, um, we're gonna talk about these three kind of in more general, um, but all four of the majors, you will have a required internship that you'll have to do as part of the degree requirements. And um, that can be working with one of our aviation faculty members or out in the aviation world. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities there for students. Um, these four concentrations also are part of the four plus one program. So if you're interested in pursuing a master's program, um, we do have a nice pathway for you. Um, and I believe Brittany may be doing this so she can talk a little bit more about it as well. Um, with the, specifically with the air traffic management, um, most of these students are wanting to be air traffic controllers in the future. Um, so that there is an age requirement with that. You do need to be employable um, by the age of 30. So kind of watch out for that, but you guys should all be in the good age range right now. Um, all, all of these uh, four concentrations do share a lot of credits. Um, so you're gonna be, even if you're, in pro flight, um, you're going to be in a lot of your classes with air traffic students. So it's just the concentration that classes that are going to be different. So you do um, meet a lot of the same faculty, make a lot of the same friends. So it is um, definitely a smaller campus. And so um, it's fun to be with all these different students. Um, so you're not just with your own concentration all four years. So that's fun. Um, and then the classes, so all of these majors, um, while you could do general studies on, you know, the Tempe campus or the downtown campus, all of your prefix, so AMT or ATC classes are only offered on the Polytechnic campus. And then throughout all four programs, there's about 450 aviation students total um, throughout their freshman and senior years on our campus. 
Now, ProFlight, obviously a little bit different. You're flying planes and going to school, so there's a little bit more to talk about with that one. Um, our program is eligible for a Part 141 restricted ATP certificate when you're finished, so that's a good bonus for the students. Um, with this program, um, to graduate, you have to have your private pilot's license, instrument rating, commercial single engine and commercial multi-engine through, um, well, through graduation. And then optional is certified flight instructing, which um, as you, our students will talk about today, they um, highly encouraged and they can talk about their experience with that. Before you start this program though, because you're also gonna be flying planes, you do have to complete a secondary admission materials packet. This would be after you're admitted. Um, to the professional flight program, but before flight training will start. Um, we at ASU do not do the flight training. We have a contractor, ATP Flight School, um, just right across the street at the Mesa Gateway Airport. So very convenient. You just finish your classes on the Polytechnic campus and walk right across the street and you're at the um, airfield. So that's really convenient. Um, so with that, you will be paying a little bit extra. Um, so it's a, about $85,000 in addition to your tuition at ASU. Um, and we do have some current pathways, not limited to just these, but with Southwest, Delta, SkyWest, ExpressJet, Compass, and Republic. And there are some extra, um, also there are extras as well. And with this is for all aviation, um, we do have some pretty cool uh, organizations, aviation organizations on campus. Um, Trevor is actually the president of Alpha Eta Rho and Brittany is the president of Women in Aviation. So um, we'd like to highlight, you know, some cool things that they're doing. Um, each of them have about each organization that is, have about 30 to 35 members. Um, it's both women and men. So I know the title is Women in Aviation. Please join, even if you are not. Um, Alpha Eta Rho started a little bit before. Um, we were on the Tempe campus. So um, this originally started in 1969 on Tempe. Um, when we moved to the Polytechnic campus, it was reestablished in 1997 for Alpha Eta Rho. Um, women in Aviation, a little bit newer. We officially became a charter in 2014 on the Polytechnic campus. Um, both of these organizations um, have a lot of gatherings. Right now it's a little bit different with COVID, but um, you will do airport tours and volunteer events, um, visit hangars. Um, I know they do a lot of things. They probably would have done a lot of things this spring break together. Um, I know Women in Aviation is doing a fun movie night tonight. So they are still getting together even in these this time right now. But um, once we can be all together, they will do a lot more fun activities. Um, those activities are going to conferences. So um, th these are highly encouraged networking organizations to join. Um, the aviation industry is a small industry. You, you meet people all over the place. So highly encouraged. And Trevor and Brittany can talk about their experiences um, with these two organizations. And now we have Brittany. <laughs> Hi guys. So like I said before, my name is Brittany. I'm a current pro flight major. Um, I'm from Newbury Park, California. So like the LA area of California. And like I said before, I'm a junior. I'll be graduating this coming fall and I will be doing the four plus one program to get my master's. Um, I'm currently the president of Women in Aviation. I'm also a part of Alpha Eta Rho. And I just recently passed my CFI, my CFII check grad. I'm currently working on my multi-engine instructor rating, and my check ride is actually next Wednesday. So I'll be done with flight training soon, and I'm really excited. Hopefully, ATP is going to start hiring in the future, hopefully in the next few months. So I'll be starting to instruct there hopefully soon. But basically, just what Women Aviation is, it's basically a way for you to get to know other aviation students. People like to say that airlines is all about who you know, and it's true. So these are great, Women in Aviation and Alpha Eta have been great opportunities for me and other aviation students to get to know each other a little bit better. Perfect, thank you. And Trevor. 
All right. Hey guys, my name is Trevor. Um, again, I'm in the professional flight program and all my classes are here on the poly campus. I'm from San Diego, California. Um, and I'm president of Alpha Eta Rho. Um, kind of like what Brittany said, you know, these student organizations that we have is really, you know, it really helps us kind of be able to network um, the conferences we attend to alumni that kind of come down. It, it really kind of helps us out with uh, networking. It's all about who you know. Um, I'm also an aviation tutor here. So tutoring is free for aviation students. So if you need help with something, um, I think a lot of people are kind of working on their instrument rating and that's been tough. <laughs> so we have a good like five or six tutors that are, you know, all 100% free here to help you guys. Um, we also have an altitude chamber here at ASU. So with the altitude chamber, um, a lot of our aviation students take that opportunity and you can actually experience uh, different effects at high altitude. Um, and then uh, I have my CFI, double I and MEI and I'm currently flight instructing over at Falcon Field at Venture West. Um, that's what I got for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. And I believe our last slide is just uh, our contact information. Um, the Poly Advising, that's our advising office. So you may have been receiving emails um, from myself or there are two other advisors that may be sending you information. Um, so please contact us at any time. Um, that will go to our advising office and then it'll be given to one of us. Um, and then the Explore Engineering. Um, Nina, maybe we'll talk more about that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So um, one of the really nice things about these Admitted Student Day series is it's a chance for you to really get a better understanding about the program that you are interested in joining in in the fall. So the aviation program, like we've kind of been discussing, is at our Polytechnic campus, and that's within the Fulton Schools of Engineering. So that's really within a larger engineering college. Um, so I would encourage you to kind of explore what else is involved within Fulton, because um, with us being the largest engineering college in the country, that provides a lot of resources to our students across both campuses and across all of the Fulton schools. So that's really our main website. I highly encourage you to check out um, the resources that, that you get as being a Fulton student. Now, um, we do have a couple of questions in the Q&A. So this is a great way to kind of kick off this portion of our webinar, which is a really great chance for you to ask questions and get them answered. So um, I'm gonna pose this first question to you, Megan. Oh, and gosh, okay. you'll be able to, to give some guidance on this. So mm -hmm. what happens if you are not able to present a first class medical by the time of the start of the semester? Do we have any guidance on that? Uh, I think Greg Files can answer this. Perfect. Okay. Well, he gets this yeah, a lot. I was, actually, <laughs> I was actually typing a, a response to that. Um, so the first class medical need to be obtained before you can enroll in uh, AMT 105, which is going to be the flight operations and safety class. It also needs to be obtained before you can start flight training. So um, you or you can just, you'll still technically be a pro flight student, but you won't be able to attend uh, the classes or uh, start flight training until that, until we receive those. Okay, great. Okay, so it looks like we've got another question and we'll just kind of put that out there to see who's best to answer it. Um, so the, so it says, since you don't need your CFI to graduate, is there anything wrong with going to a local ATP in a hometown over summer break and attending their CFI Academy? Any thoughts on that? This is a longer question to answer. Mm -hmm. um, so for the private rating, if depending on where you are in the training, it may be possible to do some flight training at a local uh, ATP facility over the summer. Um, with that said, it's not recommended to do that when you're at a point either pro or before your solo or before your check ride, because at that point you're going to be, uh, you'll probably just end up redoing a lot of the lessons to get used to the area, to get used to, um, you know, the airplane. Uh, so again, if you're going to be doing cross country flights, it's going to be a totally new environment. So probably not the best idea, but you still can do that. Um, 
With that said, anything outside of the private cannot be done outside of this ATP location. It's because this ATP location um, is uh, 141 certified and all of our training after private is 141 certified with the exception of the commercial add-on, the commercial multi add-on. But at that point, you're talking only two more weeks of training. So, um, so yeah, long answer short, possibly for private and that's about it. But they can do CFI training with someone else. CFI training can be done anywhere. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you're essentially finished the program requirements after your commercial multi and commercial single are complete. So um, with regard to the pro flight program, you are finished. You have the option to continue with CFI at this location at ATP or anywhere. Perfect. All right. So another question is, um, when does flight training typically begin? That um, within your first semester. So as long as your secondary admission material packet is all approved, um, after approval of that from the aviation department on the ASU side, you'll then go to ATP and set up your ATP account. So if your ATP account is set up and funded um, within that first semester, um, you know, maybe about, probably about three weeks in, uh, students can change their schedules uh, about 10 days after the school starts. And so, ATP likes everything to be set first because they could assign you a flight instructor and then you could change your class. So um, it's not the first day, uh, but it is within that first semester. Um, these are tied to how you progress in the air is how you're gonna progress on the ground. So we, we need you in the plane as soon as we can get you up there. All right, so then um, this is an easy one. How many students are in pro flight if you had to kind of put a number on it? I think there's about 220, 220-ish. Greg Files might have that exact number. <laughs> uh, yeah, active students, it's closer to about 150 now. Um, and that's the students that are, that are currently flying at ATP. We do have students that, uh, that stop flying for a short amount of time. We have some students that have um, that have not elected to come back yet due to COVID, but uh, we have about 150 active students flying. Yeah, this past academic year has been a little bit different for us all. Now, a second part to this question, I think it's more of an advice kind of standpoint. So um, doing ROTC, aiming for a military flight or commercial career, mm -hmm. I guess, is that a typical path that you see with ROTC students? It is not. Um, we had, to my knowledge, we had two students attempt to do that, but due to the class schedule and the requirements and the time commitments, they were not able to, to go through that. So that has not been, uh, to my knowledge, I don't think we've had anybody do both. See the drilling and the classes for ROTC are over in the Tempe campus and those are early in the morning. Um, you know, and then again, when you have full loads of classes, uh, on the poly, uh, campus and then all the flight training you're doing it's a challenge I'm sure so that's why we've only had like you know one or two people from you know a year not not even a year every couple of years there might be one or two people that, that, that do it yeah it's definitely challenging um, like they said it's on Tempe and everything you do with pro flight is on poly um, that is if if you don't know the difference between the Tempe and the Polytechnic campus, it's about probably 40 minutes um, away. It, there are shuttles that take you. You want to give yourself no less than an hour on the shuttle um, in your own personal vehicle. You can cut that a little bit shorter, but um, yeah, we, you know, students will start it and then they will um, either choose ROTC or they still like aviation, so they may change to air transportation management where it's a little bit more flexible. So, um, you know, you, you kind of want to decide what's the better route for you, but we do not have success with pro flight and ROTC as a combination. And it really just comes down to location at that point. 
All right, and would you recommend that students stay on campus over the summers to build flight hours? And then if our students, if you have any experience with what you do over the summers to be better prepared, that'd be great to chime in. Yeah, so I've done both. Freshman year, I got my private and then I took the summer off. I mean, which was fine. You're a, I think you're a freshman in college, you're away from home for the first time. It was kind of nice to go home and take some time off from school. But the last two summers I've stayed here just to get ahead of my flight training. And I'm kind of an overachiever in a way. I like to be ahead of people. So I kind of stayed over the summer to work on my ratings. Now I have to worry about school at the time. So it's really up to you. Um, if you want to take a break, that's fine. People do that. But if you also want to stay and get ahead, which I definitely recommend, but it's, it's personal preference in the end. Um, yeah, if I can just kind of segue off of that. Um, I stayed um, here all my summers except for after my freshman year. I got my private and I was actually told by one of my instructors like, hey, go home and just kind of fly for fun. Um, so I did that after I got my private and just kind of all summers kind of flew around and stuff, had fun back home. And then I came back and that's when I started staying more summers just so I could, you know, stay ahead and become a CFI sooner and, you know, get through it faster. Now, this is another uh, very student oriented question. So what's one service that ASU and the Fulton schools offer that you wish you'd known about sooner? So if you can go back to your freshman year, what would you tell yourself? Um, but I think for me, I, I joined Alpha Theta Rho as a sophomore. I think if I joined that as a freshman, it may have been, you know, an easier transition. Um, Alpha Theta Rho offers a lot and there's a lot of benefits that I got from doing that. Um, same thing with women in aviation. I think my freshman year, I didn't really know about it or I didn't get as involved. Um, and I started to find out, you know, in my sophomore year, junior year, where you really should be getting involved in all these programs. Um, so that altitude chamber, just ASU has so many things. And, you know, sometimes you really have to kind of go out and look for it yourself. Yeah, and to add on to that, I rushed Al Federo and joined Women in Aviation my freshman year, too. And some of the people I met in that are my roommates now, and are, I would say are some of my best friends. So I know you kind of like hear it a lot, like join clubs, like it's good for you, but I actually like believe it. And I met some of my best friends through that. And then the other thing that you don't really think about is if you need help studying, if you need help with a class, if you need help with anything, just ask someone. Like I know I knew people had already gone through their private, people already had the ratings above me. ASU has free tutors. They're, everyone's there to help you and don't be afraid to ask for help. I think that was one of my biggest things that I kind of struggled with. Like you're new, you're at college, you've never been at college before, and don't be afraid to ask people when you're unsure. They're, they've gone through it and they can help you. I think that's outstanding advice and you've heard it from live students, so big takeaway, definitely get involved but ask for help. Um, okay, so more of like an advising type question. I'm going to group two of these together. So um, having a major in pro flight, do you recommend or see common minors or double majors? Yeah, um, some students will minor, um, especially if they come in with a lot of dual enrollment or um, AP credit, things like that. So they've taken a lot of their general studies and we need classes to fulfill those you know, semesters. And so a minor is a good option. Um, we do see students double major in um, primarily with pro flight and air transportation management um, because that because the classes one you share 70 percent of your classes I'd say and um, and the flexibility with the air transportation management classes fit well with pro flight um, and then you kind of also have that backing with Maybe you don't want to be a pilot your whole life, or maybe something happens and you can't be a pilot your whole life. So you kind of have that other knowledge with you. Um, but yeah, those are, we do see them. Um, I, business is probably the most common minor <laughs> that we see because it is offered on the Polytechnic campus as well. So um, business or air transportation management. Um, I think unmanned aerial systems too would be a good combination with it. Um, but yeah, we do see that. 
And then um, as advisors, do you help with coordinating flight times around class schedules? Not really. Um, so your classes are kind of set each semester. So they're, they're going to vary as far as what what you take, but those are pretty solid each semester. They're usually at the same times. Um, what you'll do then is we build our class schedule at ASU well before you build your flight blocks or flight events at ATP. And so you'll have two accounts to manage. And so you'll build your flight, your ASU schedule, and then log into your um, ATP portal and be able to select your flight blocks that way. Um, classes do vary in times. And so, um, you know, maybe Trevor and Brittany have ex well, obviously have experience with building their schedules, but um, I don't think there's usually an issue with it, but I will let them talk about how they've been able to get through the four years. Yeah, so usually you pick your class schedule first and then you log on onto your ATP account and you basically just put all the times you don't have class. At least that's kind of what I did. Yes. <laughs> and then your instructor just kind of builds your schedule based off of that. And if for some reason, like the instructors are very flexible over there. Like if you tell them you have class, they'll move something for you. They're not going to be like, no, like you have to fly then. So it's pretty easy. I haven't really had a big issue with it. Um, a lot of people tend to fly in the morning. Like I flew this morning at 6 a.m. and there's not classes then. So that's when a lot of people like to fly, especially in the summer when it gets to 120 degrees in the afternoon. <laughs> so that's kind of how I have dealt with that. Um, yeah, so ATP, they, they like you to be flying at least about three times a week or at least have an event three times a week. Um, from my experience, that really puts you on track to uh, get through all of your stuff and kind of gives you an extra few days in case something happens with weather or you know, the plane you're supposed to fly, something happened to it. Um, so with with that, um, those flight box that you kind of throw in with ATP, um, I, I just pretty much put them anytime I'm free. And then the instructors kind of has that ability to kind of be like, okay, we're going to fly this day, this day, this day. Um, also, weekends are open for most instructors. So that's an option if you want to be able to fly on the weekends as well. So we have one other question. I'm sure we're going to have some others pop up. This is the last one for right now. So does ATP allow observer flights during your free time? So sitting in the back watching another student's lesson? Well, that would be helpful. Um, unfortunately, they do not. Uh, training flights are just with the instructor and the student. So um, you're more than welcome to sit in on sim sessions. Obviously, you'd have to get uh, approval from the instructor that's teaching, but um, I don't see I don't see any issue with that. If you want to sit in and watch somebody uh, in the simulator, um, you can sit in on stage checks. Um, so those are going to be uh, where a lead instructor is sitting down and, and basically uh, quizzing you on everything you need to know for the check ride, and they do allow students to sit in for that. Now, while we're waiting for other questions to trickle in, oh, there's one more here. Okay, so the ATP lessons are pretty independent then. So students, you schedule it so that you're not overlapping with other students. It's a one-on-one -on -one session. Is that what we're understanding? Yeah, for the most part, it's all one-on-one. -on -one. Obviously, when you're flying, it's just you and your instructor. But I think some instructors, if you are like on a similar place in your flight training, they'll do group grounds like you and maybe one or two other students. So those can be fun too. So the, the facilities at the Polytechnic campus for aviation, do you do we wanna just collectively talk a little bit about those simulators and the, the, the campus culture? That I think is a really big impact um, that we're right next to an airport. So I don't know if, you, if someone wants to take that. Well, just a little history about um, the Polytechnic campus, it was, uh, it was an Air Force base, Williams Air Force Base. They trained pilots from World War II all the way, I think, until the early 90s. Um, so it's, it was when aviation moved out and we occupied the sim building, which is where they had all the, the uh, Air Force simulators. Um, it, it's neat to be able to, you know, carry on the torch of quality aviation, you know, education 
um, on that campus. And, and again, just the logistics of having an airport co-located with the campus makes things very efficient uh, logistically, you know, to be able to get, get all your flight training done while you're doing all full-time classes. And, and like Brittany and Trevor, you know, they, they, uh, they've got all their, their credentials and can actually work as flight instructors while they're still students. And that's the key is to build up all the time to get to the point where you get your uh, restricted ATP and move right on to, you know, regional carrier who's just waiting for you. Um, so anyway, the SIM building, uh, now, now we have a uh, Canada Regional Jet. Um, it, it's, not, it, it's an FSTD, so it's, it's the highest quality without the motion but students in their senior year will take um, uh, that as a capstone class for professional flight. So they're actually flying in, in a, uh, and actually uh, <laughs> I get, uh, Trevor, you, you know, you might even want to speak a little bit about what that is as far as the, uh, the CRJ capstone. Sure, yeah. Um, so CRJ capstone, I took that last semester. Um, basically they throw you in a you know, very realistic simulator. Um, it's a CRJ aircraft, so it's like kind of like a regional jet. Um, and then they have uh, instructors come from airlines. Um, so one of the instructors that I did a lot of stuff with, he was from Cathay Pacific and then moved to another airline. Um, there's uh, instructors at like Endeavor, or some other airlines, but they're the ones coming in and teaching you. So the people giving you the instruction are actually at the airline, they've probably flown that plane and all the procedures and stuff that you're learning throughout that class is coming straight from their airline. Um, so I, I, I can't think of a, a better way to get prepared to, you know, go to an airline and do that training than that class. Right. And then we also have a uh, Beechcraft uh, uh, turboprop uh, flight training device. We have a Redbird um, Kind of, it's, it's got motion to it as well, and it's, it simulates both the Cessna 172 uh, and the Piper Seminole to the aircraft that they, they fly over at ATP, and those are available for students to use, um, you know, for free. And, and uh, so those are great resources as well. Uh, we have um, uh, what's kind of unique to our program compared to other collegiate programs, we have two dedicated labs. Uh, that have uh, three classes associated with it, a structures lab. So you, you, for people who really like to learn hands-on, you know, you, you, you'll work with uh, components um, that are on aircraft. You'll make a wing uh, component and test it in a wind tunnel. Um, we have a structures uh, class that kind of shows you all the types of materials that are used making aircraft. Uh, we have a logistics lab, uh, a course where students build um, collectively build a remote control aircraft and then test it um, out on the soccer fields. Um, let's see, and then we have a power plants lab where you can kind of learn all about how engines work and the components that make up an engine. Uh, and, and what's unique about those two, those three classes that are associated with those labs, all program uh, concentrations take that. That's a core course for all of the, of the majors. Um, so, uh, a lot of collaborative type, you know, kinesthetic learning goes on in those classes. Yeah, thanks for expanding on that. The facilities and the classes themselves, I mean, it's it's a really, it's an outstanding program from that, that standpoint. Um, so we have a couple other questions that have come in. One is about the flying hours requirements. So can we expand a little bit on um, the hours required for flying and why summer hours are, are maybe a thing? Do we want to Someone take that one? Sure. Um, so as far as the flying, we just recommend that the students fly as much as they can. Um, the students that do fly as often as they can when they're available over the summers, finish up this program a lot faster. They finish up, um, they get through it easier because when, when you don't have to come back to what you learned after taking three months off, it, it makes it so much easier. And, and with flying, everything you're just building on top of what you've learned before so um, you're always learning new things so it's just it has been so much easier for the students that continue to fly as much as they can um, with that said again the summers are not necessary we do require three flight events per week and what we found is even with with three per week you can get through the program as long as you're not um, as long as you're not taking breaks outside of the summertime and as long as you're progressing normally, you can finish up by your junior year. And 
again, one of the advantages of that is finishing up by your, the end of your junior year, you have your whole senior year to work as a flight instructor. Um, that way you're building your hours. You also have time to do other things like the internship capstone project, which uh, again, takes up a lot of time. So um, it's just really recommended that you fly it as much as you can, especially in the beginning to get that time in. Yeah, and Greg, that's actually another one of the questions that came up to piggyback on that is um, other schools with flight programs are talking about students becoming instructors their junior or senior year. How likely is that within our program? So with in the past at ATP, if you've completed the program, you've gone through everything, uh, all of the, the program through ASU, um, I don't know of anybody that hasn't gotten a job at ATP. Obviously, things slowed down with COVID. The airlines stopped hiring, and ATPs, they just have as many instructors as they need because nobody's moving on right now. That is going to change um, and probably going to change this summer. So obviously, by the time you guys are at that level, we'll, we'll certainly be over all of this. Um, and it, it should be no problem at all. So yeah, I mean, going through the program, unless you have unless you just, uh, I don't know, burned bridges with everybody along the way, which again, I haven't seen that happen. Um, ATP is, is always looking for instructors, uh, good quality instructors, and they really like um, the program here. They really like the, the instructors that they get here. So getting a job there will not be an issue if you go through the program. Um, and again, getting it your junior or senior year, um, ATP is will work with your schedule. So you, you know, while other instructors are working full time, they're going to give you whatever time you need to finish up your classes, your internship, things like that. So um, we have a good working relationship with ATP. And again, they love hiring our graduates. Right. And then, uh, you know, uh, just to piggyback on that as well, the uh, uh, there are other, you know, students uh, can, can get jobs as flight instructors pretty much anywhere in the Valley because they, you know, the, the Phoenix Valley is just so attractive for flight training because of the, you know, the weather. Um, and, and so there's a lot of flight training academies in the greater Phoenix area. And, um, you know, students uh, might even prefer going and working for a different, um, uh, you know, flight training school within the Valley as a flight instructor. So it's not just limited to just opportunities at ATP. It's, it's pretty much everywhere. And again, as, as Greg was saying, um, you know, once we're done with this COVID thing, the airlines are going to start building their flight schedules and getting their people back on board. And then it'll start opening up, um, you know, again, the pipeline uh, to the airlines. I'll kind of add to that on the academic side. Um, the quicker you become a CFI, you can also use that as your internship. So while you're being a flight instructor, maybe your senior year, and you haven't done an internship yet, um, that's very easy for you then. It's kind of built in. So, um, you know, doing it like these students we have on here now, getting it done before you graduate is um, going to benefit you academically also. And that's a good segue into, you mentioned internships. We have another question about internships. So can we expand a little bit on what that internship entails and if United is one of those pathways for ProFlight? Uh, yeah, I will let Mark or Greg answer the United part. Um, but yeah, for your internship, it, it has to be with an aviation related industry. So. This year it was a little tricky, especially like air traffic, they weren't opening towers. And, and so they were able to um, essentially kind of be like a TA for one of our classes. Um, those labs that uh, Mark was talking about, they always need uh, TAs in those and those are fun classes. So um, as soon as the instructor releases the, that, that, those go quickly. But um, yeah, you can go, we've had students um, at Southwest Airlines, Delta, I know, um, American. I American. Um, yeah, so, you know, as a flight student, you're not flying those planes, you're working in an office, you're, you're doing different type of office duties as an intern. But um, yeah, we send out the aviation department receives um, internship opportunities from 
all over the aviation industry. And so we send those emails then out to the aviation students. So um, really, if it's aviation um, related, take advantage of it. Um, but those, yeah, those major airlines, if you can get in with those, especially over the summer, um, take advantage of that and go to Texas or go to, you know, go wherever these, you know, major hubs are. And, um, and definitely that's an opportunity for you. All right, so we have one other question um, more about the pro flight program cost. So do we wanna expand a little bit on what that extra cost entails? Yeah, so you are paying ATP directly for really the use of that airplane. So um, the fuel of that airplane, the maintenance on that airplane, the instructing for that airplane, you know, those ratings that you're in. So all of that will be, um, you'll have an ATP account, you put money on there. Um, it's kind of like a bank account at that point, you fly the hours, the money goes down, you replenish it. So there's different ways you can monitor your ATP cost account. Um, and then you'll have your ASU account also. So that's gonna be your tuition, if you live on campus, room and board, things like that. So as flight students, you will have to monitor those, but, um, but really all things flight related would be to ATP. Is that kind of what they, did that answer the question? <laughs> so, and then a follow-up with that is uh, you cannot, is it true that you cannot fund your ATP account until after school starts? Um, once it's created, I, I believe you can fund it. I don't, I don't know that one. <laughs> yeah. Once you create the account at ATP, you can fund the account. Um, and again, they would need at least a thousand dollars to start the account. Um, but I believe you would need to submit all of your documents to ATP as well. I mean, I knew, I know that you need to submit all your documents, but I think you have to do that before you can actually fund your account. And what that means is you need to either send in or not send in show them a birth certificate and a driver's license or a passport. And they need to see that in person. They need to make a copy of it themselves. So that's not something they can, that you can uh, email or send into them. They need to see that themselves. So, and that's in addition to the one, the copies that you send to us. So that was the questions that we are currently at. So um, as there may be a last few questions trickling in, I just want to, from the, the big outreach and recruitments uh, perspective, talk a little bit about student next steps. So at this point, um, this, this webinar is for admitted students. So whether you've been admitted and submitted your enrollment deposit already, awesome. If you've been admitted and you're still considering where to go, the next step is to submit your enrollment deposit. And that all happens in your, in your My ASU portal. So if you haven't logged in to your My ASU portal, that is really something that I highly recommend you do sooner rather than later, because that's where all of your information lives. Um, the other nice thing about that portal is that you can see a finances tab. So if you've been awarded um, any scholarships, you should see those popping up in your accounts relatively soon. This is the height of financial aid season. So um, don't panic if you don't see anything in there just yet, um, but that will be where those, that information lives. Now, once you submit your enrollment deposit, another thing I wanna point out is that that grants you access to what's called your new student experience. That's how we are framing what orientation is. So orientation in the past used to be an all day in-person event. With, with the pandemic and just logistics, that's a little challenging now. So what we've done is created this new student experience. So it is something that lives in your My ASU portal. And it's really a series of modules that you walk through to complete all of those admitted student logistical steps, such as turning in your transcripts, um, scheduling a meeting with your academic advisor, registering for housing. So all of the things that you would need to do to get ready to start for the fall, that's part of your my student ex new student experience. And the way you get access to that is submitting your enrollment deposit. So um, any questions about the admissions process, we're also happy to answer that. But if you've gotten what you need from our presentation this morning, you are more than welcome to log off. If you are um, interested in learning more about the other Admitted Student Day presentations that we're offering over the next few weeks, I really highly encourage you take a look at the Fulton website. 
Um, I'll put that link in the chat here, but there's a number of other uh, webinars out there that you can look into if you are interested. So if you've gotten what you need, thank you so much for joining us and we'll stick around, I'd say for another few minutes, just in case you have other questions.